Hi everybody, this is Danny Klass. Um, I've been spending some time, like I think a lot of you online, looking at guitar-related stuff. And I've noticed a question that comes up in some of the forums on learning guitar, which is, how can I get better? How can I get better in general? How can I get better with uh, chord changes? How can I get better learning modes, etc.? And it got me thinking that I should probably do um, a lesson or almost more of a tutorial on how can we get better with the guitar? What are some things that we can do? And what is the difference between playing and practicing? And so that is the, um, the focus of today's lesson. And I come to this lesson having sort of made a mistake uh, once upon a time where I had um, five years of lessons with some very uh, strict, uh, proper, uh, good teachers. And I thought that, well, <clears throat> you know, I've learned everything I need to know. I had learned modes and chords and chord construction and, and some jazz. And I thought, well, I'll just kind of keep playing that again and again, and that'll help me get better. And that was a big mistake because there's always more to learn. And there, there's just a kind of an infinite um, thing about music and about the guitar because you can always use alternate tunings, for example. So right there, you can use different string gauges to get different emotions. Um, and you can always, um, anything you learn, you can put in, in the Western music in 12 different keys. And so I've changed my practice regimen about two years ago because I felt like I was plateauing and I'm going to... Uh, talk about that when we talk about practicing. Okay, and hopefully that'll be useful for you. I mean, that's the idea here is to hopefully help you, if you feel you want it, to kind of grow because we have the time, um, at least some of us do, when we're sort of stuck at home. So the um, plane is, let's talk about that first. And, you know, it gets a kind of bad rap, I think, because people think, oh, you're just noodling, and, you know, you're not really doing anything, and you're not progressing, and, you know, it's not really useful, but I don't know, I mean, as long as you're clear about what you're doing when you pick up the guitar, and if you're not clear, then you're playing, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, I mean, why do we even bother anyway, right, to learn, why do we bother to play, well, because it feels good, we like the way it sounds, we might like the way the guitar vibrates against our body. Um, I mean, that never gets old, right? Just that vibration. And there's nothing wrong with that. It could, you know, serve something just sort of useful for you. It might make you feel good. But you're unlikely to learn. You're unlikely to grow. You're unlikely to get better, I think. Um, maybe you will, but at a slower pace. And so in order to to learn and to get better when we what we need to do for that is to practice and so for uh, practice I will suggest a three-step um, activity to do uh, if you decide to practice if you sit down and say I'm not playing <clears throat> excuse me today I'm going to practice then here's what you should do okay so the first thing is a finger warm-up to literally get the blood going in both hands um, I, I tend to think more kind of in in the left hand. It just seems busier for at least the style that I play. So the first um, activity that I would suggest to warm up would just be a chromatic scale on all six strings. It's not going to sound very musical, but it will do the job. So what we do is we just hit the open E and then first finger, first fret, second finger, second fret, third finger, third fret, fourth finger, fourth fret. I'm on the sixth string. And then move your hand, go to the fifth, repeat the process, move your hand, watch your thumb. Make sure your thumb is always, you know, close in there between the first and second finger.
worry about so much technique here, I don't think. I think what matters is this, you know, why are you doing this? What's the point? The point is to get your hand warm. Hands, both. Et cetera, et cetera. And then, if you want, you can always go backwards, right? I would say about five minutes. The other warm-up activity that I'd like to suggest to you is what I was showing in the in the in the intro, which is major scales. I play them going in the circle of fifths. So C major scale, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, etc. And I just like the way it sounds. And for whatever reason, I ascend and then descend. So C major scale ascending. Descending to the D, ascending, I'm not sure why I slide, I just like the way it sounds, I'm a big slider, but whatever works for you on this, it's just a suggestion to do all, you know, all 12 keys, and if you don't like these, then come up with your own, it really doesn't matter, the, the point is, is that you're getting your blood going in your hands to make yourself uh, play better and practice better. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step that I would suggest for practice is about, I don't know, maybe five minutes, a little bit more of something that you kind of know already, right? That you learned maybe, what, two weeks ago, a week ago, that don't think too much about it, just kind of play it. So, for example, if you think, well, right, oh, that makes sense. I just learned actually minor chords in the first position, and I'll just play those. However, whatever you're doing, I mean, whether it's strumming or arpeggiating, doesn't really matter. Just to kind of re-familiarize yourself with those, with, with that technique. Not thinking too much about it. It's nothing new. Tweak it just a little bit, maybe, if you just kind of want to throw in something different. But try to stay close to um, that particular thing for about, like I said, five minutes. Okay, so now you're ready for the main part of your practice, which I would suggest to be about 20 minutes. Um, you can get a lot done in 20 minutes, actually, as long as you're focused. You can, you can go pretty far. And so for this part, this is where you are playing something new. You're practicing something that you don't know, something that's unfamiliar. It might be even a little uncomfortable um, on your hand and in your brain, but do it anyway, because this is where the growth happens. And so this could be anything. It depends on where you are and what you're doing. If you're learning a song, there you go. If you're learning a new theoretical concept like, um, I don't know, hexatonic scales, and you want to do it in A, something like that um, there you go whatever it is as long as it's something unfamiliar and new um, it doesn't have to be theory but I do have a, a preference for theory because I think it generates music ideas and gives you you know the language of music but you don't have to learn it whatever works for you as long as it's something new it could be a new technique it could be you know switching from chord to chord something that that you don't know, but the idea is that you are kind of forcing yourself to learn, to grow. And um, like I said, about 20 minutes. And then when you're done, I think it's a good idea to write down what you practice there in step three, that new thing, to write it down, write the date and then write it, write down what you did. It doesn't have to be a long description, you know, um, it could just be, um, you know, the date and then a hexatonic scale in A. And then what I like to do is if it generated any emotion, positive or negative, I write that down. So if I'm playing something, I think, yeah, it was fine, but it didn't really sound that great to me. You could just write, you know, something like meh or uh, whatever. I'm not going to use it much, but, you know, that's it. On the other hand, if it's something like, wow, I really like the way that sound Um and I want to uh, use it and it just really, you know, felt good. Write that down, you know, sounded good. Maybe using a song, uh, maybe explore later. It doesn't have to be anything long. And then, 
and then you're done with, with your journal. I think the benefit is that, of course, you can go back and read them, but also it makes everything more intentional and you're able to kind of kind of own what you're doing and maybe feel accomplished. Like, yeah, I did this and I wrote it down. I proved it. You know, or I proved it to myself that I did it and it mattered. So that would be my suggestion. I hope you found this useful for, for your guitar life, that you're able to kind of use this to, to grow. And, um, you know, when you, when you decide to play, if you're clear on what you're doing, then I think that will go a long way. So thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe, stay well, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.